There are a lot of discussions and some outright arguments going on today about a term, total depravity. Let me define total depravity in two ways that it's often understood today. Total depravity, number one. Here's the idea that man is wicked and cannot save himself. Man can do no saving act towards God. That's what we'll call total depravity, number one. Total depravity, number two, is a little different of a definition. It says this, Man is wicked. He cannot save himself. He cannot even believe. Total depravity, too, has the idea that a man can't learn about God. He's so spiritually dead. He's so out to lunch spiritually that he can't analyze God. He can't understand a thing from the Bible. He can't learn. He can't understand and he cannot even believe in Jesus Christ. Total depravity, too, in fact, is given another name, total inability. So let's be clear about this. Do we believe in total depravity? It depends on who's defining the word. Give me the definition, and I can easily tell you if I believe in that concept or not. And so let's do this. Total depravity, one, is absolutely true, and it's very obvious, even for a casual reading of the Bible. Man is wicked, and man cannot save himself. Man cannot do a saving act toward God. We're not saved by works. We're not saved by religious deeds. We can only be saved by faith, which is possible for man to do. Total depravity, too, the idea of total inability that man is so far away from God that it's impossible for that man to believe in Jesus Christ is not biblical. In fact, not only is it not biblical, it's an absurd idea at its core. On its face, this is a, a scriptural teaching. Total inability, the idea that man cannot even believe in God, flies in the face of clearly understood Bible verses. And so with that, let's go to the Word and focus on the Bible. Jeremiah 17.9 is very clear. The Bible says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Well said, Jeremiah the prophet. All of us have hearts inside that are totally depraved. There can be nothing engineered from the human heart that would be savable towards God. And that's exactly why the gospel good news is good news. We couldn't do a saving act towards God, so Jesus Christ came as God in the flesh to do an act a sacrificial substitutionary sacrifice that would open the gate for us into heaven if we would believe in Christ. And the Bible is full of those commands that we, as depraved people, would believe in Christ. That we couldn't save ourselves, but we can believe in the one who does save Romans 3.23 is well-known scripture, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. At our very best, we still fall short of God. And hasn't Isaiah been clear about this? In chapter 64 and verse 6, Isaiah tells us that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. So even at our very best, we could never do something savable towards God. Psalm 19, 1, listen to this. The Bible says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. So God is declaring something about himself, and God is showing something about himself. He uses his creation to convince the world of his reality. Now here's the key question. To whom do the heavens declare? Well, to everyone don't they? Doesn't everyone get an opportunity to know that the sun is in the sky all day long and the moon is in the sky at night? 
The stars are declaring something about God for the benefit of everyone in the world. So when someone tells you, friend, that because we're spiritually dead, we can't understand anything about God, well, take them to Psalm 19. The heavens are declaring to the whole wide world. In fact, it gets better. Verse 2 says, Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. The days are uttering speech about God to everyone in the world. Night after night, God is showing the truth of God in the skies. Do you see these words of learning? You see these instructional words God gives us about what he's doing to reveal himself to everyone? Declare, showeth, uttereth speech, showeth knowledge. Verse 3 says, There's no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Verse 4, Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. So the Bible is very clear. People can learn about God. People can observe. People can reach conclusions. They can analyze, and they can make judgments about God. Frankly, let's say it very clearly, people can reject God and people can receive God. We have that ability. The idea of total inability that no one could ever be saved unless God has foreordained that they would be saved is just not biblical. We have a responsibility to see what God is saying to see what God is showing, to hear what He declares, and make up our minds to receive what He says as truth. Verse 7 speaks about the law of the Lord, the Word. It says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. And so we have a responsibility here. To receive the word of the Lord would convert the soul. To receive the testimony of God can make wise those who are simple-minded. But all of us have a decision to make. What is our will towards what God is revealing to us? Verse 8 says, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. And so all of us can have our eyes enlightened by God. We can learn from Him. We can understand His message. And we can rest our faith in Him. Romans chapter 1 is another very clear passage about this idea of the depravity of man. Is man totally depraved? Well, he's totally depraved in that he cannot do a righteous act that would make him savable to God. But if total depravity means total inability, that the man not only is depraved, but he can't even believe, well, we have to throw out that idea. We're not within a total inability. God expects us to learn. God expects us to believe. Romans chapter 1 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So this is where... God is wrathful towards man is that man knows what God is revealing, but man holds it in unrighteousness. You see, man has a knowledge. He knows what God is saying, but man doesn't like what God is saying and rejects that, and this brings on the wrath of God. Verse 19 says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. So does that sound again like man cannot know God, can't understand God, unless God zaps him with a regeneration that man has never even thought of? Of course not. It says here that that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Verse 20, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being witnessed by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And so one day, friend, every person will stand before God. Every human being that God ever made will stand before God and give an account for what he did with what was revealed by God. 
In our conscience, we have the revelation that God is real. John chapter 1 and verse 9 says that he lights every man who comes into the world. And one day, each of us will give an account for what we did with the light that we had. They will all in that day be without excuse. No one will ever stand before the God of creation and say, Lord, I'm lost in hell forever because you created me with a total inability to ever know you. This friend is an affront to the truth of the word of God. John chapter 5 and verse 40, Jesus Christ is in a conversation with some who are in full-blown rejection of his truth. They don't have a total inability to know what he's saying. They know what he says. They don't like it. John chapter 5 and verse 40, Jesus looks at them and says, And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. You see, friend, they could have life. They could take a drink of that water that would be in them a well of water springing up into everlasting life. They are not in a group of people that have a total inability towards God. No, they have ability. They could. But what they're suffering from is not that they can't believe in Him. It's that they won't believe in Him. John chapter 12, Jesus is at it again. John in chapter 12, he says these startling words that almost no one reads anymore. You see, this idea of total depravity to total inability is growing across America today. There are many people who are telling us that it's true, that the only way to be saved is if God zaps you with a foreordained blast of regeneration but friend, is that what the Bible says? John chapter 12 now, verse 46 and following. Jesus said, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Does it sound to you that man has a total inability to receive the word that Jesus spoke about salvation? No, man has an ability, but what man sometimes doesn't have is a desire. He doesn't have a will to believe in Jesus Christ. And that man will be judged by the very words that Jesus spoke. Friend, this is not so hard to understand, is it? Some say that if you're one of the four ordained to be saved, that you cannot reject God. Well, it says here that someone rejects Him, in verse 48, and those who do reject Him are going to be judged by God. It makes no sense at all, does it? That God would create a person with a total inability to believe in Christ and then judge the person because he didn't believe. Friend, Total inability to cannot be believed by us who hold the Bible in high regard. And we have an interpretation that sticks to the scripture. Believe in Jesus Christ today, friend, and you'll be saved.